What's up, guys? Let's talk some football. Let's talk Buccaneer football and that 38-3 to Buccaneer victory. That defense only allowed three damn points, and that's with, without Levante David, Richard Sherman on the shelf. That, that front seven played well. We're going to go over it all. So let's break it down. What did that front seven do? And just overall, the defense playing as a whole, 11 working as one. And we're going to go over the first drive of the game because that set the tempo for the whole entire game. Plus, break it down for me. What did you like? Right, yeah, very good. Just like you said, guys were in, you know, sync, playing as one. Like you said, 11, you know, running to the football, making plays, as you're going to see here, Jordan Whitehead getting that penetration and, and stopping this for no gain. So it was a great start, um, you know, right off the bat. And then this play I love. They're going to send some pressure here off the left side, really confusing the left tackle. Uh, don't have enough guys to block uh, both Shaq Barrett and Antoine Winfield. And it's a great pressure sack fumble and almost recovered by the Bucks, but just couldn't, you know, make that play. But really just a great concept, guys working together. And you look at the back end as well. Everything was pretty much covered. They're only sending two guys out. Uh, so just a great start here. Um, really a big play. And welcome back, Antoine Winfield. Absolutely. One of my big favorites on the defense. I love Antoine Winfield. Got his jersey. And let's let's keep talking about it. There's nowhere to go with this ball. I mean, Justin Fields, rookie, he wanted some time to throw the balls. They're doing a lot of max protection. But it doesn't matter if everyone's covered. I mean, look at underneath. Options. Covered. Covered. Two guys here. Everything's covered here. The only thing op open is underneath, where the first-time marker's over here. They made it hard on him. And the early sack kind of threw it off as well. I mean, this is how Buccaneer defense should be run. Assignment sound football. I like it. I want some more of it. Tell me more. Yeah, I love it. Again, you're only, you know, rushing two at the moment here. Uh, but, uh, you know, dropping everybody into coverage. It's a smart play because it's third and long, like you said. Uh, and there's really nowhere to go with the football. So his only option here is to throw it down in the flats. Again, he makes the right choice instead of, you know, trying to force it downfield or force it into coverage. Again, a good, smart play by the quarterback and just really great defense by the Bucks, And it sets this play up all together, which is Jalen Darden being, you know, back as the main returner and creating a sp splash play here as he makes a nice move right here, you know, setting up his blocks really nice and then getting to the outside. Almost took this one to the house, just couldn't turn the corner there, but just a great play and really set the tone for the rest of the game as the offense went and uh, scored on this drive. Always electric. I'm, I'm hoping he kind of gets his niche there and continues to strive forward. But we keep going on, looking at quick passing, getting it down. What do you like here? Yeah, I mean, you talked about some of those injured guys. The Bucks secondary has been banged up all season. And we've asked guys like D. Delaney, who had a really good game in this one, uh, you know, matched up here, just reading it, reading the quarterback, jumping the route here a little bit, getting his hands on the football. Just smart play and, uh, and you know, really sets up the next play, which is going to be his interception as we get to it. But really quick, I want to add this. He's young. He may be, like, thrown off immediately guys that are getting run at like this usually start backpedaling quickly he stays his ground knows his zone he's not going to get beat deep yet so he just stays in there and literally if he backpedals that's a completion if not look what happens i love it and now jpp getting the pressure and like plus was saying earlier d delaney with the interception break it down for me since i stole your thunder <laughs> no, you're fine. Uh, yeah, this was, again, just guys working together, everybody doing their job. Again, they're playing, you know, a cover three shell as they're going to have, you know, the corners drop back into their zones, the deep safety, you know, drop into his. Everything's covered underneath. And again, pressure causes this uh, chaos up front where Justin Fields is, you know, pump faking, running, and then he's going to try to heave it up and not a good idea as the ball's inaccurate and D Delaney in good position here to read the football and then break on it, make a nice catch. That's a, that's a really, you know, game changing type play and the momentum just continued to carry on. That was a nice heady play. And then more in another, another interception. Check out this play again. Joe Tryon here, getting some pressure quickly making this decision for Justin Fields gets rid of it. It's a good ball guy. Just maybe it's a little too high for him. Tipped and interception for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And Jordan Whitehead being in the right spot and coming down with the catch. You got to love that. Usually he drops these. I like it. Tell me more. 
Right. Again, like you said, again, good pressure up front, pushing that pocket forces the quarterback to, you know, throw a little hot here. Um, you know, the receivers just turn around that ball comes out, you know, like a missile off that fingertips and a great catch by Jordan Whitehead. But again, the big takeaway here, everybody's in their right position. Everybody's in where they're supposed to be. And usually that leads to good plays like we see here. And then more pressure, making fields make quicker decisions. What happens with that? Interceptions, turnovers, and bad decisions. If you're to see her just making the right move, being in the right position, jumping up, highballing it, coming down with the ball. I like it. Tell me more. Right. Again, guys stepping up. I mean, Pierre Desir, you know, D Delaney, guys like that have, you know, really stepped up to the plate. And maybe it's the coaching of Richard Sherman, who knows? But <laughs> this was this was really good to see. Again, played this perfectly, starts up front with the pressure and just good teamwork here as you know, eleven working as one. Now that technique, that's what it is. Richard Sherman's technique. Now, fourth down, Justin Fields trying to be a superhero here, but what's open? There's nothing open. Look at all the assignments here. You got two guys and Allen Robinson, Minter helping out over here. I mean, there's no one open. Fourth and four, so he's going to try and run for this. JPP says, uh uh uh, I'm going to hit you with my club and pick up a sack. I like it. Tell me more. Yeah, I like it too. I mean, there's not much else to say. It's just really good execution by the Bucks defense. They're collapsing this pocket. JPP does a great job of making this tackle, not letting Fields escape him. And just really good job by the Bucks defense. Uh, like we said, or you said, I mean, everyone's covered. I mean, there's really nowhere to go with the football. And it's and now it's Buccaneers offense on the field. And more pressure. We got Shaq Barrett. We got JPP working the edges. Vita Vea in your face. Double team. Don't matter. I'm going to be right there. And Shaq getting his hands on the ball. Fumble. Buccaneer football. Nice. Tell me more. Yeah, very nice. I mean, this is... This is what you want to see. And again, it's pressure and coverage working together, pressure causing that chaos, creating turnovers like you're going to see here. Good job by Shaq. I mean, they really abused the the right tackle uh, all day, um, as you're going to see on the next play. But just really good stuff here by the front four, getting home and making big-time plays. Like you said, let's check that right right side. Is he any good plus? Uh, not, not very good. I mean, I, I don't understand why they didn't help him out. They probably should have had, you know, blockers, uh, to help that side because he was getting beat left and right. And JPP makes that, you know, that club come in handy as he's going to swipe through and then swipe down on the football. Great play. Playing with one hand, clubbing it, knocking this down with the club emphatically, and then already celebrating, even though the, the fumble's out, he could have gone after it. He knows his guys are going to get it, and he's just stomping his feet over there. What Shaq Barrett's doing with this lateral, I don't know, but no one called it. Good thing for the Buccaneers. And Devin White gets a little more extra yards on this one. What do you like? Yeah, like you said, I mean, <laughs> uh, just JPP showing that confidence and then Shaq Barrett picking it up, trying to throw it forward, which I guess is <laughs> still legal. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's awesome. A great play, and. You know, just now we get into the run defense, which which struggled on Sunday. Uh, but this was really good. Guys in their gaps, guys, you know, getting penetration, Vita Vea and, and Ndamukong and Sue being monsters as usual. And the running back's just going to run right into uh, Vita Vea here. So he's just going to eat him up. Let's be honest. Vita Vea does this every game. Look at the manhandle of this guy. Throw him down. Sue's standing his guy up. You normally don't have anywhere to go. When the linebackers work with that front four, it's, it's nasty. Our front seven working together, it's it's hard to run. I mean, it's proven two years in a row, now going on three. But this is what happens when all seven aren't working together. Look behind the line. What's going on back here? They're confused. They're getting crossed up. But like This communication is huge. Levante David not being there is probably huge as well. And look where Minter ends up going. Play's going this way. He's going this way. Mm-mm-mm. Not a good look. What do you see, Plus? Yeah, definitely, uh, like you said, miscommunication. Kevin Minter needs to stay on his side uh, towards the towards the strong side there as the football is going that way. Devin White gets confused by it as well. And if you don't have your linebackers there to, you know, fill those gaps, this Oops. is what's going to happen as, you know, Vita Vea, again, not the, you know, he's still fast, but again, trying to ask him to, you know, make that play is tough. Uh, and then same thing here, you know, Kevin Minter is going, 
one way, the running back's going to go right into his gap. Uh, just not good. Again, missed tackles there by both of them, Devin White and Kevin Minter. So these are things that just need to be cleaned up. Again, it's good blocking there up front by the Bears, but you should have a guy there to, you know, fill that void. Assignment sound football. That's all we ask. Overall, they only allowed three damn points. So we're not that mad at all. They did the things. We're just showing you areas of improvement, especially when Levante David comes back. That's going to be vastly improved. Well, other than that, guys, if you like the content, make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below. How good is the Buck defense getting? Is it getting? Is it improving, especially with all the secondary injuries? Let us know down below in the comment section. And with that said, until the next one.